This video is intended to help us understand the true meaning of the 2D plane strain assumption. Here's the three-dimensional view of a basement excavation in layered strata. The excavation is supported by the basement walls there, and you'll see that the excavation has quite a complex geometry with non-orthogonal corners and a step in the basement floor. Some of the walls are supported with inclined struts. We have some point loads inside the basement and some line loads outside. If we remove the ground from around the basement, you'll see that we also have bearing piles to simulate and the basement wall along one side of the basement is supported by ground anchors. So overall, a complicated geometry and if we model this in 3D, it would take a long time to set up and then analyze all that geometry. It would certainly be a lot simpler if we could analyze one or more 2D plane strain sections of that basement and still obtain all the outputs we need with sufficient accuracy. Now, we covered selecting appropriate geometrical simplifications in an earlier video, so we'll just go ahead and take a section there through the basement and see what that looks like. It's got everything there, the basement walls, the step in the basement floor, the inclined strut, the ground anchors, the bearing piles, the point load and the line load, as well as the approximately horizontal ground strata. The best way to understand how plane strain analysis works is to visualize in your mind's eye what this 2D plane strain model is actually simulating. Remember, plane strain means that all strains are in the plane of the analysis. There is no strain in any direction away from the plane. So the conditions, geometry, loading, etc., are all assumed to be the same in the direction perpendicular to the analysis plane. The best way to visualize that is to extrude the plane strain model perpendicular to the plane. Normally you would have to do that in your imagination, but we'll do it on the screen here to help you. Let's do the basement walls first. You see they are continuous and straight and of uniform section, not following the true course of the basement wall at all. Having a uniform section is probably a reasonable approximation, even for a contiguous piled wall, because the piles are very close together. What about the bearing piles? Look. Instead of discrete piles spaced out with soil between, they're being simulated just like the basement walls. You would need to be careful with input parameters and interpreting outputs for those pile elements to take that into account, and we'll cover that in our Structural Elements e-learning course. The same goes for those inclined struts. Instead of having a spacing between them, they're actually providing continuous support to the basement wall. If, in reality, they were connected by a whaling beam immediately in front of the wall, then that wouldn't be too bad an assumption, as long as the input parameters for the strut were specified correctly. The same goes for the ground anchors look. That's more serious because they're in the ground and so won't simulate the anchor-soil interaction quite right. And the ground strata too. They are all assumed to be horizontal in the direction perpendicular to the analysis plane. And look at those loads. A point load in the plane strain is actually a line load perpendicular to the analysis plane and the line load outside the excavation is actually simulated as an area load. Let's compare what our plane strain model is actually simulating with the original 3D representation. You can see that they look very different. 
Now, there's nothing wrong in principle with analyzing a 2D plane strain model to represent a 3D problem. It does provide sufficiently accurate outputs in many situations. What is important is that we understand and visualize the geometric assumptions and remember them when selecting input parameters and interpreting outputs. This can affect the input parameters for soil and rock, for example, as described in the competency tracker module called Obtaining Soil and Rock Parameters. More information on inputs and outputs for structural elements in plane strain is given in our e-learning course on structural elements. Now let's look at the 2D axisymmetric geometric assumption. Here we have a shaft excavation which, due to its circular shape on plan, possesses axisymmetry. There's the three-dimensional view of the ground and the embedded retaining wall that will support the shaft excavation. There's a pair of struts near the top to support the walls. We will excavate down to form the shaft and there you see another pair of struts near the base of the excavation. There is also a footing foundation with an applied load near to the shaft and we would like to predict the effect of that foundation on the shaft walls. Let's try simplifying this to a two-dimensional axisymmetric analysis. We'll take a section from the axis of symmetry down the center of the shaft out through the footing and see what that looks like. There's the section with the shaft wall, the struts, the footing and its point load. We'll excavate for the shaft like so. So what exactly are we assuming here in this 2D axisymmetric model? All strains are in the plane of the analysis and there is no strain in any direction away from the plane. So the conditions, geometry, loading etc. are all assumed to be the same in the direction perpendicular to the analysis plane but in the circumferential direction around the vertical axis of symmetry. Just like we did for the plane strain model, let's extrude that plane around the axis of symmetry to see what that assumption looks like. The retaining wall looks okay, of course, but the struts are actually solid disks or slabs now rather than struts and the footing and point load have actually encircled the excavation. Let's look back at the original 3D model to compare it with our 2D axisymmetric assumption. You would need to be careful about specifying the input parameters for the struts and interpreting the outputs and we'll cover that in our structural elements e-learning course. As far as the footing is concerned, clearly a 3D analysis would be more accurate in this case. But if using a 2D program, perhaps you could compare analysis results with and without the ring footing and use your judgment to assess the real effect on the wall.